Uh, hello, everybody. I'm glad you came <laughs> to this presentation, even it's, uh, uh, despite it's final. I'm Ondra Chaloupka. I work for Red Hat. Um, I work in uh, Wi-Fi development team. I'm uh, spe particularly working in Narayana, which is a transaction manager, uh, <coughs> which, is, which won't be at the, to to the, the topic of the talk today. Even, uh, even I, I will uh, touch a little bit the transaction as well. Uh, I would like to introduce you the approach that Wi-Fi -like, -like takes uh, to um, provide the Docker images and to, uh, how to, those Docker images are then uh, deployed to, to Kubernetes. This is the set of tools that uh, I will present you and the uh, approaches that is taken. I, I will be uh, talking about Kubernetes, but uh, the, in general, the, some of the automat automations are done just for, then for OpenShift that uh, make the, uh, the, the work with it easier. But I deliberately take to uh, Kubernetes as I will be uh, showing some like uh, uh, small steps what, what all needs to be done to, to get it uh, running. Uh, so I will talk about S2I, which is still used for building uh, images that Wi-Fi uses, Galen for provisioning, and then about the operator, which is uh, uh, the, the way how to or to deploy to Kubernetes. This won't be about uh, microservices. Uh, I will talk rather about uh, when you have your beloved Java E application and you, you want to uh, put it on uh, to the cloud or to uh, uh, in, into the Docker image. Um, I will be a little bit like switching uh, between uh, um, uh, my slides and some uh, some. Uh, commands that I will be typing and trying to show you what I'm doing. Here I have a like, simple demo first, one which is a, a simple Java application, hello world, from the quick start of Wi-Fi. And this is just the, uh, like the web servlet with uh, some injection of the uh, service that then returns some uh, information. When I have he here this uh, kind of the application, uh, this simple one, sorry, I need to find it, but, uh, then the Wi-Fi approach to get this uh, being container, containerized to Docker is using S2I, S2I build tool. S2I is uh, abbreviation uh, to source to image, provides a way how to create reproducible uh, Docker images from, from the source. Uh, this is the diagram where it's shown uh, how this uh, works in, in, in general. Uh, there is some source code uh, that is passed to the uh, source to uh, S2I machin machinery, and then uh, that's uh, built with, with the builder image, which is prepared. Here we have one uh, for Wi-Fi as well, and then resulted container image is created uh, from that. Those are these are the images that are available on Quai.io, which is the place where you can uh, consume the Wi-Fi images for, uh, for, for Docker builds. There are like three. Um, the last one is Wi-Fi op operator, which I will be talking uh, later about. Uh, the first one is this uh, S2I build, build, uh, build image, Wi-Fi CentOS 7. The second one, Wi-Fi runtime CentOS 7, is uh, uh, meant to be used for uh, chain build, where the First one creates the uh, uh, S2I, uh, S2I compilation Docker image. Then the second one uh, is, is meant to be used then for uh, stripping the size of the image to the to the uh, to the uh, to sl like smaller one. I will show you. Uh, that's in important to say that this runtime CentOS 7 image does not contain any Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, server itself. That's uh, just a prepared uh, environment, just an empty wrapper. The where is expected you pro provide uh, provide with the with the uh, built uh, Wi-Fi co container, Wi-Fi server later on. So uh, 
that as the S2I is like a two, when you want to 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 run it, you need to uh, take uh, to 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 download it and run it. Uh, this is the command that I first I will uh, run it uh, on my I will copy it and uh, run it on my uh, in my bash. I will try to make it a little bit bigger. And I, during that, it will be doing it will be downloading the uh, uh, the repos and building the sources. I will talk what's this uh, about. This is the S2I, which takes uh, the source code for somewhere that could be folder that could be a uh, GitHub repository. It you can define what tag you you goes with. You can define what is the uh, directory that you will be building uh, your uh, application from. And then you choose the, the Wi-Fi CentOS as a S2I, uh, uh, S2I uh, image that, was, that the S2I will uh, work on. Uh, this is the like just result image as the tag uh, in the Docker. And with, with the environmental variables, you can provide some, uh, some the definition of what, what uh, some con configuration of the, of the process. With this, uh, with this Maven ops, I'm just saying that some uh, specific repository should be used. What's interesting here is this Galon provision default FAT server, which says that uh, I want the S2I is as of to be I meant it to be as a final step of the whole building process that will be then just published, and with this I uh, the S2I creates for me the final. Uh, standalone Wi-Fi server that's uh, containing the, uh, s the the, the um, build application. Why this Galon? I will just talk in in a, in a second. Uh, what's the tool about and what how to how to work with it? From here, it's just important. Uh, I I took the uh, I took the source, build it, uh, uh, the S2I deployed to to the container and it's propagated as the standalone server somewhere to the image. With this, uh, here I hope that it's all already done. So you can see there are some Maven commands, everything is already uh, downloaded and built. And I will be here uh, like copying the commands because there are kind of a lot, lot of arguments here, so, but I will be saying what I'm doing. Uh, with this, I am now going to to run this chain build. I am taking the uh, S2I image, and I will be uh, uh, this 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 build will uh, create the final final image, which is uh, stripped based on the based on the runtime image of the Vive fly. Uh, what's what's this is about? I need to define a, a Docker file. This Docker build runs on this one Docker file, which takes the uh, runtime image as a base. Uh, then I say this is this is the my S2I Hello World container, which I built just a second uh, ago, and it says okay, takes the data from this container and copy it to under the under the uh, like Jables home directory. This is defined in S2I runtime image. So it copies there with the deployment with, which was already uh, built and then provides me uh, the runtime image. Uh, with this, uh, I can ju just check, okay, there's, if this, this should be already run. I'm, I, I do have here uh, like Four images already prepared, but this first two ones are uh, what I want to mention right now. Is this is this Hello World Wi-Fi CentOS one, which is this S2I image, which all the uh, like like data that is needed for the build being done, and then this stripped one, uh, this with the runtime one, which was like provided with this, uh, which was the empty wrapper, which, which I provided now with this chain build with the container. Uh, okay, that, this is just uh, some image how the, uh, this chain build works that took 
the S2 I build and, and provides uh, the result artifact that was uh, I already uh, ex explained. Uh, S2I as an image and this process was uh, chosen mainly because of uh, the uh, Wi-Fly is quite a big end of feature set and it's uh, with, uh, with uh, coming of the Docker uh, that's not, not usual that you will just take hold your server and deploy it uh, and or take it and put it to the, to the Docker file you would like to strip the size of the uh, of the Wi-Fi uh, as a server to just like some small, smaller size than than it's uh, like usual uh, uh, when you download it. Uh, when I like run the kind of just to check, for example, uh, the size of the uh, size of the uh, standard uh, Wi-Fi currently in beta one. It's like about 100 megabytes, and it provides all the features that uh, Java EE uh, may may provide you. Uh, this this is not what I would like to have for Docker, where I would like to just say where I would like to build it and then run it. I don't expect that I will be deploying a different application to the Docker file. I will just build and run, and if I need to provide some other feature, I will build again. So uh, this all comes from the fact how the, okay, now I'm just, uh, uh, let me uh, like introduce this Wi-Fi module thing, which is, uh, um, which is connected to this, but the point is that Wi-Fi uh, uses this uh, uh, JBoss modules as a uh, library for class loading that makes, uh, that uh, does not provide this loading of the, all the class that are uh, available in the Wi-Fi uh, with the like on the as a flex class part that all the classes will be ra will be loaded at the start, but uh, it provides a way how to say just some of the class some of the jars that are really uh, in important or which are important or which, which are really used during the during the application runtime are loaded and used. Still, there is this uh, like uh, module. Um, if I if I just uh, show you, this is how the uh, this is the standard uh, like folder how the folder of when you download the Wi-Fi looks like. There is some like b binaries and so on. The, the what I am talking about is now this uh, modules files modules folder which contains all the jars, all the features, and then this is the uh, Java command which really executes the start of the Wi-Fi. So here I say, okay, uh, take this JBoss modules class loading library and I provide the path, the, the path where the modules, uh, all the features reside, and then I start say what will be the startup, startup module which boots all the, all the Wi-Fi server. Uh, this is nice, but there is a lot of jars. So as I said, there would be good to have some way how to strip that uh, number of jars to some small, small, smaller uh, number that I will really need when I will run uh, at a, in, in the Docker. This is what Gaon as a provisioning tool provides. This is the tooling that is capable to kind of to say just the capabilities which which are needed for the application and build the application server for you with this cap just with the capabilities. The here I this shows the command line, but this this provides us with the API as well, which is in fact used during the Wi-Fi build itself. So there is uh, some Gillen definition of where the data f should be taken from. Then I define the layers that will be used. Uh, so the def definition of features and uh, some uh, the the place where the uh, the the strip server will be will be uh, created. The I said funny part is that this is uh, already integrated in S2I S2I built image. So what I can say do here I can just say okay I want to uh, strip just uh, the the, pro the the application server to the 
features that are just uh, as big as I really need for my application. And uh, with this, just only the uh, CDI, CDI layer and web server layer will be used because I know that I, in my application, I use just the, uh, some an endpoint to HTTP call and CDI for injection. As uh, now it's building, creating uh, stuff, I think that's uh, still the same as, as before. Just here for the comparison, that could be seen, uh, the, the stripped, uh, the, okay, and I think that I have some mistake here. <laughs> there should be <laughs> the, the difference. Um, okay, maybe I will, uh, yeah, the stripped server should be just smaller, yeah, there is, this should be about like 150 megabytes smaller than the than the original ones. If I take just this runtime image, which which was built as a whole without the Galeon layers being defined, to, to strip the feature set and again in in comparison with the Galeon as as uh, definition of feature set that which is taken. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, just that. Uh, the gallon is used during the standard Wi-Fi builds when uh, when the uh, pro, uh, when the Wi-Fi is built, and then gallon is uh, used as well. Uh, okay, so this is the the way how you can build the the images uh, for Wi-Fi, and now I would like to move to the part how to how to how to think how to do how to work with the with the how to put that. To Kubernetes, I have uh, again like a small demo, which is kind of uh, just as a small, simple, but uses uh, more uh, more uh, capabilities of Java EE. Uh, this demo is is uh, uh, is, is, is separated to two parts. So is there is a client server, which calls the uh, the second server. The client server just receives some uh, incoming REST call, uh, provide do some EJB uh, business call, business uh, business work, which may, means here just to create uh, some JMS message and send it, and then call the rem with remoting uh, to the second server, where the EJB again is used, receives the receives the call, and. Uh, uh, save some 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 uh, uh, something to to database. Uh, okay, uh, just let me uh, show you the like application here, just for you to understand. This is the client side, which has some REST endpoint that could be called. Then there is a remote bean, which provides this capability of uh, sending of sending. JMS data to to uh, the JMS broker, and then there is some uh, uh, remote call to the to the second server. On the second server, there is again a bean which receives this call, uh, unless something uh, to persist something to, to to database. Okay, maybe I try to make it a little bit bigger. And yeah, there is some like transaction magic to make me possible to. Uh, Fail the transaction or the, the 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 server at the particular point at the time that that I need for 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 showing you. Uh, just to yeah right. Uh, so this is the two applications, and I, now I will just try to uh, I will show you to how to how how how, how this will be working just in simple way on uh, without the Kubernetes. Uh, so I will again take uh, here for help some commands. So I am taking uh, Wi-Fi 19 beta, and uh, unpacking it and copying to three separate Wi-Fi uh, uh, Wi Wi-Fi um, distributions, and with this. Now I need to configure it because that's just uh, plain Wi-Fi. Wi flies. Uh, as I said, there is uh, first one is meant to be. Uh, uh, okay, there is something that I copied it to the wrong directory. Oh, yeah, 
that's bad. Uh, sorry, once again, because I am at the wrong place here and I need to fix it. Okay, uh, now it should be fine. This uh, Wi-Fi one me is uh, is meant to be this client server that calls these two other ones that will be deployed in the oh okay that will be deployed as a cluster of uh, of two servers and for me being able to call from the uh, from the first server to to the second service, to the to the colleagues, I need to create a, 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 um, a user and credentials credentials for it that uh, the first server, the client, can use to connect. So this is command that which creates me for me the user that I will be used for this remote EJB calls later. Now I need to configure the uh, first server with some of the, uh, uh, the, the information how to connect to the second server. Uh, this is the where I use these uh, CI commands. And okay. And this is just uh, like simply CI command set which creates a kind of the definition how the first server connects to the second one. And uh, yeah, that, that says, okay, there, this is the credentials to use, there, there is a, there is a endpoint to, to connect with, and, and this is, this is what's, what's happening here now. Uh, now. So now it's uh, time to start the Start the server. Yeah, right. Um, I need to take this application and uh, copy it to to the uh, servers. So I now I uh, compile it and deploy it by copying the var, var archives to the uh, particular servers. And with this, I can start the servers. So one by one, I'm really really using to define the. Uh, offset, uh, port offset for not having the trouble of binding uh, to, to, to occupy ports uh, on the same machine. And I have, I have started uh, the first server, the client one, and this, this to the Wi-Fi 2 and Wi-Fi 3 is now uh, connected to as a clusters once there is information from the groups or information span that the clusters were created. Just to uh, point that I started the, the server with this command where I defined the node names to, for, for the clustering nodes, how to connect the, the servers while I as well defined the uh, uh, transaction node ID to 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 be uniquely defined when the uh, when the containers will, uh, when the application server will be connecting to the same uh, databases to the same resource to, to transaction will be capable to uh, differentiate. So with this, I will just quickly show the capability of EJB remoting here. That uh, with the in fact when it, at the time when I have a stateless beam with the transaction being propagated from one server to the other server, then the transaction context is passed through that uh, through the wire, and there will be defined the transaction affinity. So the, all the calls from the client will be hit uh, to by with, to, to, the, to the same server. If I do the same with the like with, without the transaction, then the client okay there is. Okay, th this is the stateful where the affinity is as well as well uh, defined. So, if I have stateful bean, there is try to hit still the same server without transaction, and with stateless bean, there will be some like um, uh, load balancing of the Wi-Fi calls uh, of the EJB remote calls. Uh, right. So, uh, now I just. 
uh, with this there is some uh, like with every every call there was created uh, some user in the database with this i i just uh, delete all of them because now i want to show like last like example from this is some failure uh, this is configured in a way that uh, there are the uh, there are there, there is a crea created a special resource during the transaction processing where the transaction is started on the client, passed to the second second server. There is uh, some JMS uh, message passed to the to the to the message broker, and the other other side there is the, the uh, something saved to the database, and uh, uh, then failure the crash of the server happens during the commit processing. That means that the expectation is that everything is already uh, prepared. Uh, and confirmed to be finished uh, successfully, but crash happens. Then it's up to the transaction manager or periodic recovery to really uh, fix the situation. So when I call this, I can see the failure, that fail, uh, fail call passes with, with success that said that uh, Wi-Fi 2 was hit. But uh, I can see here that the container itself is down and there, there was some errors in the log that uh, connection was closed. Uh, uh, that's now on me as uh, administrator to, to, to start the container again. And when it started then uh, as a uh, transaction manager from the ser first server tries to finish all the unfinished works that was uh, not uh, finished yet. For me to uh, like speed it up because this is the some process that takes some time. I just invoke it uh, manually now. Now I am saying, please, transaction manager, uh, finish all unfinished work that you know about, and the uh, transaction manager from the first server checks what's not finished on the second server, and. As there is uh, like some endpoint that can tell me uh, about the safe users uh, at the second server, uh, that's uh, send me there is some ID with with, with uh, the number thirteen. So yeah, that this is uh, yeah, that what's happened. I I haven't show I I missed to show you that. At the at the time uh, at the start of the uh, of the server that uh, user was really not there yet. Now after the recovery process, the the, the data were really saved into the database. So that that's the what what happened. Now I have uh, this which I would like to promote to uh, to, Kuber to Kubernetes. I have the Minikube here as. Uh, is a way how to how to work on my uh, laptop with the Kubernetes, and I will move here again. I would need to uh, build the, the Docker image. Uh, that the Docker image I can then uh, push to the to the to the Kubernetes. This is the same like the same uh, same way how I did it uh, before. The only thing that I would like to uh, to. Uh, highlight is this uh, parameter S2I image source mount because S2I is kind of the configurable and uh, uh, you can provide different uh, uh, options via environmental properties. With this, I say there is some folder in the source uh, in the source code, which uh, this folder is named extension. And this folder, uh, please please S2I takes this folder and checks checks what you can do with it. It's said that uh, when uh, the S2I is checked, checks if there are some uh, special named uh, shell scripts, which is here install as a, uh, SH, which is run during the build time, and then post configure SH, which is uh, run uh, uh, during the startup of the of the Docker container. So what I am doing here is that uh, during the build time, I'm saying please copy. Uh, all the all the data that I have here in this directory, and then during the runtime, I have some post configuration uh, time uh, like phase where uh, the CI 
CLI, uh, CLIS executed and could be used to, to configure the server. For sure, you can provide directly, uh, I don't know, a standalone XML configuration, but yeah. Uh, so this is, this is all, all should be done, and I have prepared the image. I will skip this uh, building part because we already seen it. And with this, I can just simply create a deployment with, I hope that uh, this will work, seems. working. Okay, so now it's starting, uh, executing the uh, executing the CLI commands. I do the same with the second server, and as well I create the services that I need for being able to access the, the, the particle uh, pods. Uh, Okay, now I'll just check what. Okay, that's not. So the first server is started. And there is the se second server started uh, as well. Now I would like to have this being in two replicas, so I I will change the change the replica number to two. So from the first. For, for with the two servers, I want to scale up to two. Uh, two. Uh, if I check the lock again, uh, there there should be a trouble um, here uh, that the uh, the the J groups the the layer that manages the uh, the clustering and the Wi-Fi says that it's not capable to find out what are the what are the pods available to connect with. This is the uh, this is the point that the uh, Wi-Fi uses uh, J groups to find the the other application server around, and the uh, protocol which is used here is uh, Cube Pink, which which scans via Kubernetes uh, calls what are the uh, pods with the same labels. At the same namespace, and because uh, this is not defined by default, uh, there are no no permissions for uh, for the, uh, the for the pod can do that. So I need to say uh, to, to 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 provide the permission that there is a possibility for the uh, for the uh, uh, for the container to to check what are the uh, uh, to check what are the what are the uh, pods around, so I provide here the uh, the like binding to cluster all view that makes possible to check all the all this to to list and get uh, all information about the uh, about the objects in the same uh, namespace. So right now, when I check the server, there should be already somewhere. Not that. That's uh. Uh, and uh, should be in some loop, and yeah, already it started to it found each other, and there is the set that uh, rebalanced the mem members, and they are already found should be found to to yeah to servers in in the cluster. So now I have the kind of the same configuration as before deployed on on Kubernetes. Uh, I can like execute the same commands here as before, where I just here, uh, I say, uh, taking the URL of the service of the client and execute the, the, the command. I can see here that, again, that goes to the same server. And now I want to, to check what, what happens if one of the server fails. That could be because of some failure as I simulated here. Maybe it's because of some rescheduling of Kubernetes that is done automatically to some different node. With deployment, which I used as a like, first thing that came to my mind is 
that there is uh, there is uh, several things problematic, which is first uh, that there is no no um, no guarantee for uh, for IP or DNS uh, DNS persistence. So next, when the the uh, uh, when the pod is restarted, then it could be bound to a different different name, which is trouble for the recovery or for any EJB remote call that goes from one server to other server. This is kind of the stateful stateful thing uh, in the process. The second thing is that problematic is there is no persistent storage. Kubernetes um, does not provide uh, deployment object does not provide it by default. So uh, anything that is saved during the time of the the pot is living. It's just erased when the new pot at the at, under the different name is started. This is something that it's uh, problematic for Wildfly because it's a stateful application, especially for because of the transaction manager uh, saves data about uh, transactions at some folder or maybe that could be uh, safe not just persistent to disk but could be as well to, to database but still there is this statefulness in, in mind so deployment is not a great way how to how to how to really deploy the wife fly uh, the way how now I'm just cl clean the like the all what I created now the way how how it decided, or the Wi-Fi sold this, is to using the Wi-Fi operator, which is uh, like providing you with uh, these uh, these things in mind, and you will just take the, uh, the to say that what resource, how the how the um, how how what do you want to deploy for the Wi-Fi. And all the objects that I was now trying to create manually as deployment and services are created by operator for you. Uh, if I am just looking down here, uh, sorry. I, I first I need to um, I I will I will just start the Postgre. Uh, I need to find it. I will just first start the Postgres server, just as uh, for being there uh, available, because I want to show you how to connect to it with the Wi-Fi operator. And now again, I have I need to somehow provision, uh, somehow create a, a Docker uh, images, which is already done. Uh, for now, that for me not not need to repeat this, and I can just to checks what is needed for the operator would be would be prepared there is a operator as as it is is defined by some crds which defines what is the field that could that operator is capable to work with there is kind of things like the replicas the number of replicas that i want to deploy uh, it can inform me about the status and etc this is something that i need to provide to kubernetes uh, to know what he can expect, and then uh, with with that, then I can create the uh, then then uh, I provide the, the the YAML definition for the operator itself, and which is deployed to the to the Kubernetes under this Qi Wi-Fi Wi-Fi operator image, which okay, which is again available in Qi. Uh, with this. For operator good work, there are needs some permissions again, so there is need some role binding, etc. So those things are here uh, are summarized in Wi-Fi operator and uh, here run Minikube uh, shell script, which defines all those preparations that that is need which needs to be done before I can really start the application. So I do it now as well and to let the Kubernetes know about those okay there is some trouble here I don't know what's true okay I'm just 
the second there is some trouble. Okay, let's try now. Okay, I'm not sure what's, what's, what's wrong here, but yeah. Now I created all the necessary uh, necessary uh, objects for Wi-Fi for operating to work. Uh, that was like prerequisite. And with this, I can say, okay, there there is the definition of my uh, of my application, and this is uh, done here in this YAML file, so it could be that simple as here it is, that I say, okay, I have some uh, Docker image that I already pushed that should be started with S1 replica. Or I can uh, at least uh, say uh, to define uh, some environmental variables pointing to some secrets and so on. This is uh, some environmental variables that are provided by, again, by Galeon that uh, that creates for me uh, some templates for data sources, and with this, I'm with providing these environmental variables. I'm informing that that uh, data source should be like filled with this information, and and then uh, my application may uh, may use it to to for its work. And that way, because uh, I started at the Postgre uh, Postgre uh, database. Uh, I can use it right now with this uh, definition. Okay, let me again uh, I will use these to to push it to uh, to Minikube. And with this, there should be hopefully already containers creating. And now the as you can see here, there is with the operator. When I deploy operator, there is a special pod with, which manages the all the uh, all the works uh, of the creation of the stateful set uh, services, all the objects that are needed for Wi-Fi to be to be running, and there's this order information that is get, getting the information that's creating the, uh, the the stateful set and services and so on. Uh, No, I hope that it will be already started or not. It works. Yeah. So now it's now it's booting as as before and yeah. When when this will be done I just want to check that it really works. Um hopefully. Okay, seems that to be started again, and when I just uh, try to run the com the uh, HTTP requests, I can see that was returned because deployed with the operator, so I say set. Uh, when I try to run the same command with failure, now that I know that uh, this hits the server one, the server one would be down in uh, at, the, at the second for a, for a while when the Kubernetes found that it was down and started again that you can see the, there is the restart number one so that was crashed and now restarted again and it's it's uh, there is the guarantee that this will be started with the same DNS name that uh, any unfinished remote calls could be finished afterwards because the, the this is the persistent uh, and guaranteed. Uh, yeah, so mostly that's that's mostly it. What I have prepared. Uh, just maybe two more points. There are some possibilities for debugging with the Wi-Fi opera operator. There is again the, the way how to define uh, via environmental variables. Um, 
if I just to try to set right uh, Debug, uh, okay, debug, script debug. With this, the client pod should be restarted, and and there, will, there should be uh, first uh, available for me to connect with the debugger at port 8787 as well there should be much more information and it's not now the case so I don't know exactly what happens but uh, with the script debug there should be much more information about what's happening during the S2I build phase uh, I'm sorry that I'm right now not, not sure what's happening because I'm uh, going out of time so I will skip uh, the debugging of the failure and in summary in summary yeah, the process of building application for uh, for Wi-Fi, the approach we took is to using S2I. You can use Galleon to strip your uh, uh, the, the the size of your uh, of your server for you by definition of layers, the features that you want really to provide for the Docker, and for the for the Kubernetes, you should uh, use Wi-Fi operator because it it. Uh, knows a lot of details how to what what needs to be provided for the Wi-Fi really works correctly at the at the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, yeah, uh, if there are some questions, <laughs> I'm free, happy to uh, reply. If not, so yeah. Oh, so, oh, sorry. Can you speak up? You mean these these ones? Uh, yeah, sure. That there is uh, in the in, in slides that I hope that will it's uh, as well. Uh, there is over here. Um, uh, yeah, that, that there is in, in my GitHub repository, and this is linked here in the slides uh, at the part where the where the uh, demo is presented. Uh, sorry, that's wow. That's a lot of slides here. Okay, okay. Yeah, this is this this presentation, and yeah, then uh, it it's linked there, and yeah, there are all the all the notes, slides. Uh, you can check it on your own if you if you want. Um, as well, there is there are the. Um, uh, blog posts on Wi-Fi.org with information about uh, Galeon, about S2I, with some of more details uh, at, at some part. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I uh, I forgot to um, <laughs> repeat the question. Uh, question is if I, I I plan to write a blog post for Wi-Fi. Yeah, I would like to create a blog post from from like the summary of the pre of this presentation. How to how to get, for example, Hello World to be deployed to via with uh, S2I to Docker uh, Docker and then how to put it with the uh, operator to Wi-Fi. I hope I will provide it. Yeah. Okay, something else? If not, yeah, I hope that you learn something new, at least, or at least interesting, yeah, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs> <laughs>